And what was so amazing for me to witness when I saw my sister having success um, was how many people saw themselves in her and saw 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 that their daughters had that you know like um i didn't grow up with anything like that i had you know pocahontas we called her honky pocus um <laughs> and, and we knew it wasn't real um, right but you know when for a lot of indigenous women and girls you know, to see my sister playing a comedic lead on TV as a fat indigenous woman, somebody that looked like them or looked like their auntie or like their mom or like their sister, somebody that looked normal and sounded normal and like real, like people broke about it. Like, and I, I mean, she's my sister. So it's like, of course I know she's awesome. Like I always know who she is. <laughs> And I, but I totally underestimated how meaningful her representation and how Rutherford Fall re representation, how Reservation Dogs representation, um, how, you know, the kind of renaissance that's happening right now in um, TV, cinema, um, the arts, fashion. There's a real, like, um, like a, a, a vibrancy and a vitality that's building right now in indigenous creative spaces. And it's such a major source of joy for indigenous people. And so that's one of the things is one of the, the coolest and most fun things right now about, you know, um, being a modern indigenous person is seeing how, like we always adapt. We have yeah. and we will always survive this. And so it's really, really cool to be seeing makers and creators building the things and showing me the things that I wanted as a young person that I wasn't even able to articulate that I wanted. The kind of, um, you know, cultural mashup that we're seeing right now where you can hear some really awesome, you know, uh, powwow music m mixed with, you know, EDM. And, you know, you see indigenous uh, designers on major fashion runways. And you know, it's, you, there's just, um, there's just some really exciting things and some really cool people out in the world right now that are really fun to follow and support. So yeah. I definitely recommend, uh, you know, if you check out Rutherford Falls, that was a really good one. Only two seasons. They canceled it after the second season, which is so sad. Are you serious? But, yeah. But there's a lot of hope that maybe another network will pick it up. Um, okay. I know. it's. It was, I had no idea. I just watched no. the first episode tonight, and I'm literally laughing out loud. Um, I'm going to watch the whole thing. So great. Season two is so funny. Yeah. Watch the whole thing. It's so good. Um, but also watch reservation dogs. Um, unlike, uh, Rutherford falls, they just went all the way and it's a fully indigenous production crew cast. Like, wow. Okay. I mean, they have a couple of broken white people. In the cast. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but they made a point of having all indigenous writers, directors, producers, like, and they filmed right up the road from me in Okmogi, Oklahoma. Wow. So okay. it's set. It's a story about Raz kids and it's set on the Raz. Are your and sister, is your sister in it? Yes. Um, okay. She's not a writer on that show and she's not like one of the leads, like she is in Rutherford Falls. She plays a lady named Bev who, um, is a pretty salty broad who works at the uh, Indian Health Service Clinic. Um, so one of my favorite episodes of hers is from episode five, season two, where she and um, a bunch of the ladies that she worked with at the IHS clinic go to the annual IHS conference. Um, and so if you've, if anyone has ever been to a conference ever, uh, 
the conference jokes are just like peak. <laughs> it doesn't even <laughs> Is necessarily it- matter that it's, um, you know, an Indian health service conference. It's just conference jokes. Conference cool. jokes like like big conferences that any industry goes to? Essentially, yes. Okay, um, yeah. So my, my sister's very, you know, the very funny shtick about her character is, um, you know, everybody goes to the, you know, you go to a conference and you get your lanyard with your oh, yeah. name tag on it, right? Well, of course, this is a bunch of, you know, natives. So everybody has their like fancy beaded lanyard with their name tag. Um, well, my sister is, you know, at the conference and she has like a dozen lanyards around her neck. <laughs> And, you know, somebody's like, what, what's up with the lanterns? And she's like, these are all my conference snags. They're like her souvenirs <laughs> from her conference hookups. <laughs> so, like, your sister, it's so hilarious for me because in that first episode I watched, I feel like you two have some of the same mannerisms, you know? And I talk to you virtually like this you know, for like a year, almost every day or whatever. And so I feel like we know each other's mannerisms. And uh, I mean, I would just be like, that's just like here, here would do that, like that same thing. And so funny. It's just like, it's so surreal for me, even though I've never met her. I'd never seen her in anything. It's just weird. Like, I'm like, yeah. like, I know her, you know, yeah, you know what's so weird for me is like for like the first 10 minutes, I was like, oh my God, my sister's on TV. And then after that, I was like, yeah, okay, no big deal. Like, it was like, oh, I'm, in, I'm, you know, I'm here with her character. I was like, not being sucked out of it by the fact that I was like, oh my God, it's my sister. You know, like, yeah. Uh, it was just a few minutes of that before I was like, oh yeah, now I'm just watching her play another character of the many characters I've watched her play. But, I need to remember to like still be like, ah! <laughs> oh yeah, really cool. it's very it's very <laughs> crazy for me. And she always, you know, she has a bunch of like projects that she's working on, and it's always like, you know, the next working on the next thing. So um, yeah, the, those two shows are excellent. 